Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Dai Abdullah, the director of LGBT outreach program at Muslims for Progressive Values. In this video, we're going to talk about LGBTQIA people fully understanding their legal rights at state, federal, and international levels under the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights as LGBTQIA people. Muslims understand historically that there were two different periods during the development of the early Muslim community, that being Mecca and Medina. However, there were actually three stages, Mecca, Abyssinia, and Medina. Muslims today find themselves under one or another of these types of states. Some Muslims are living under hostile circumstances, some are living under a non-Muslim theocratic state, and others live under Sharia. As we will see, there are Muslims living in a secular state, and their expectations of their civil and legal rights, and the importance of knowing their rights under the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. When we look at our Islamic history, we see three distinct different states during the Prophet's lifetime. Those states were Mecca, Abyssinia, and Medina. In Mecca, the Prophet and his followers were living amongst hostile culture. This culture, which was pagan by the way, provided the framework for the early Muslims to understand and appreciate the importance of freedom. Later on, Muslims were sent to Abyssinia, which was a Christian state and a lot friendlier to these believers of God than their own country back home. Some years later, the prophet and his followers moved to another town and begun their new city-state in which we now call Medina. In Medina, the prophet had constructed what is now referred to as the first constitution in the world. In this historic document, the Prophet in his new state had a lot of guarantees for their non-Muslim community, one of which was the right to freely worship. As Muslims of today, what of these three states makes sense to you? If I were to think about these states, I would probably choose none of them. Instead, I would vote for a secular state in which everybody's rights were guaranteed and which did not have to be under any religious authority. Now, do we have any Muslim-majority countries like that? Of course we do. There are countries like Turkey and Albania, both of which have secular states that mirror those of their neighbors in Europe. As Muslims who live in a secular country, like the United States, what we need to strive for is to accept, support, and be a productive part of our secular societies. Of course, we can't do that if we don't understand the legal rights we have in our societies. First and foremost, I want you to understand your legal rights as a gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered or otherwise queer Muslim in Islam. If we have learned anything from these previous videos, it is that when it comes to sexual minorities, Islam gives us a broad sense of a legal framework under which to operate. As Muslims, we are required by Allah to live a happy life, to serve the divine, and to live harmoniously with the rest of creation. As a queer Muslim, there are no legal responsibilities other than what has been placed upon you to give you a happy life, to restrict your life. Islam just like Judaism and Christianity, has placed restrictions on heterosexual relationships because those relationships were seen as having to influence the growth of the family, community, and the faith at large. Of course, that doesn't mean we get a free ride to do whatever we want. As human beings, we have a lot of responsibilities because we're not just animals. In the United States today, all of the states have criminal laws against homosexuality 
because there was a decriminalization of homosexuality that took place in the early 2000s. Just from that point of view, we can appreciate to live in a secular society where our sexualities are not criminalized. Now in several states, and this number is growing, there are more and more civil rights being afforded to LGBTQITSA people. In many of these states, gay and lesbian Muslims can now legally marry one another. Of course, the American society is still struggling with some of these things, and Muslims for Progressive Values is part of a growing number of American organizations that are fighting for these remaining rights. What are some of those remaining rights? They include the right to marry in many states, the right to adopt in many states, as well as the right to hospital visitation. On December 10, 1948, in Paris, a number of state leaders from around the world came together and signed a revolutionary document that would forever change the rights of minorities all over the world. This document, known as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, has been signed by the majority of Muslim states and there has been tremendous amount of pressure on those who have not. The United Nations Declaration of Human Rights has been used to place asylum seekers from Muslim countries and Western societies. It has also been used to bring awareness and several Muslim countries to the urgency of human rights in those societies, as well as using it as a framework to further pressure countries that are part of the United Nations, but have continuously refused to become a signatory to the document. This is why the United Nations partners with non-governmental organizations to work with them in various communities. Here at Muslims for Progressive Values, as an NGO partner of the United Nations, we are going to continuously work with the United Nations to bring more and more Muslim states to become signatories to the document, to respect human rights, and to become accountable for their abuses. Over these past several videos, we have learned the history of social contracts, development of legal frameworks, the political environment, and have had counterpoints to the history of Islam in sexual and gender minority communities. In conclusion, I want you to take from these videos the best of yourself as a Muslim person of sexual or gender minority in the community. I thank you for taking the time to do this with me, and I hope to meet you all in person at any of the events held by Muslims for Progressive Values at the United Nations or anywhere else.